Jim Duke Radio. Informing you beyond the mainstream. A rational voice in the world of conspiracy. This is the Jim Duke Perspective. Welcome to Jim Duke Perspective. We are welcoming back my friend Laura Maxwell to share her thoughts about New Age and Halloween. Be sure to listen as she brings us her perspective and insight into this topic. First, I want to welcome you and uh, thank you for listening and uh, invite you to my website, jimdukeperspective.com. And that's where you can find all my past archives and articles and such, as well as connect with me. Our sponsor is AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com for the finest in long-term food supplies and survival equipment. And uh, check them out for storable foods and freeze-dried foods and such to satisfy your emergency needs. AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com My guest today has been seen and heard on several interviews about her past involvement with New Age and Spiritism. She also interviews others with their experiences. Her website is OurSpiritualQuest.com. Well, I'd like to welcome my friend, Laura Maxwell. Laura, how are you doing? Hi, Jim. I'm doing well. How are you? Great. And thank you for joining us. you got a lot of information. you got a background in this. So I'm going to let you speak and uh, tell everybody. Uh, well, first of all, why don't you tell them a little bit about your background so they know where you're coming from? Yeah, basically... Um... I live in Scotland, and um, I was brought up. My mother was was very interested in the New Age and in spiritualism. She was interested in wanting to contact spirits um, of what she thought were the dead relatives and, and spirit guides, ascended masters, and so on. So we were interested in psychic phenomena, the paranormal. Um, spooky films at Halloween, you know, anything that, that really would seem to prove that, that there is a, an afterlife, that, that, that we could contact these beings um, and, and have them guide us through life. So so really, I followed suit. You know, I followed my mother's steps and she got into, in the UK, we have what they call spiritualist churches. and um, it is, you know, basically the same as what, what you'll have in America with people who, who want to contact spirits, seance type activities that, that go on. So we started to go there and we were there for some years and we got involved in going to the clairvoyant classes, psychic development groups. Um, we got involved in yoga and meditation also because they all advised that yoga and meditation are spiritual practices and that doing them will um, attune you more to spirits, make you more receptive to being able to contact spirits. So these were the types of things we were involved in. Um, and we got more and more into it as time went on. And then something happened to you. Yeah, well, well basically... Um, you know, it was all very fascinating and very enjoyable, um, and the information was accurate, of course. But we began to hear um, that that some people would run into difficulties. That that some mediums, some channelers, some psychics, they would no longer be able to control when their so-called spirit guide, so-called dead relatives, came through to them. Um, so that they were being pestered, really, by these entities day and night. Um, and we heard about this, and, and there would be different reasons given for it, like, well, maybe that person's just uh, got some negative energies, maybe they've got bad karma to work through, therefore they're attracting harassment from spirits. Uh, you know, there there was different explanations given, um, w- which basically would seem to suggest that that was the case so we would just accept it um but we would even even going to the spiritualist library where we had the the papers the periodicals that they that they um had the psychic news and so on or even reading books by mediums down the generations 
the, you know, this theme would often come through and it was a concern because we would think, well, why is this? And how do you protect yourself? Because obviously a, a lot of these mediums are well trained and know how to protect themselves and yet it doesn't always work. So it was a concern, but something that we didn't really dwell on much until, of course, we began to have problems. And so um, this is what happened to my mother. She used to be able to go into trance and meditate when she wanted to contact spirits, but now they were coming in against her will. Um, She, for example, once was in the kitchen cooking and they took her over in trance And she did not know what she was doing, what was going on. And by the time she came back uh, around into consciousness, the the whole kitchen was consumed by fire. The the food had burnt um, and really the whole kitchen was destroyed. There were other times when uh, I was with her, we would be out shopping, uh, going to the mall, and she literally would be picked up and thrown onto the street. Um, So that type of activity was going on and basically she went to her doctor, asked for sleeping pills and the doctor asked why. She explained the phenomenon and the doctor said, well, there's no such thing as spirits. If you're hearing voices and and in danger, I think you have schizophrenia. And she incarcerated her into the local psychiatric hospital. So um, this was a shock to us all. But again, we we had previously heard that before, you know, that a lot of people involved in the paranormal can end up being put in there. So it it wasn't a a unique situation. And it was around about that time that I actually met a Christian at university. And I I told her that the situation, she was a lovely girl that, you know, wanted to help. And so I, I explained it all to her. She asked me to her Christian church. And I wasn't that interested, really, because I didn't believe Jesus was the saviour. Um, I had very new age ideas about him. I believed he was um, perhaps a medium or an ascended master and so on. But but she was nice and she kept asking. And eventually I kind of thought, well, why not? And I went along there and I, I did hear the gospel. And it was very shortly after that that I did give my heart to Jesus um, and, and got born again. Sadly, though, my mother um, was sent home. And, of course, the thing is, the demons were still in her house. They were not uh, cast out. So she was harassed again, and this time she actually killed herself. Uh. Yep, which was awful, obviously a terrible tragedy. Um, And, you know, that was 20-odd years ago now, and I still hear from people worldwide who have been in very similar situations. They were almost suicidal or one of their loved ones did kill themselves because of these exact same types of um, scenarios. So it's a very real... It just shows you the dangers that are really involved in these things. Um, yep. Yeah, so you came from um, you came from all that and you came out of it and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And... People do not realize that when they're into spiritism or New Age or the occult, they, they, mm-hmm. they're they taught that they're uh, able to control demons or summon demons or channel spirits and get guidance and, and use them for their bidding, not realizing mm-hmm. that these spirits are using those participants in like a channeling so they can channel and use the participant. And eventually, if it gets to too uh, dramatic or, or, you know, it, it it continues, the person is eventually overtaken by these demons. That's what it sounds like, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, yes, it is. And there will be people who will say, well, I've been a medium for decades. That's never happened to me. Um, or, or I've been a Wiccan or I've been, you know, whatever. But, you know, sometimes what happens is that, person who is being used very successfully as a channeler um, and they're happy doing that, the spirits have got no need to rattle the cage or to cause any trouble because they're being used. But if the person decides for for whatever reason 
hey, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to have a, a different career or whatever. I'm going to stop doing meditation. I'm going to stop channeling. That's very often when the people start to see, oh, wait a minute, this is something's really not right here because it's it's then that the demons will retaliate and attack because they don't want to use that uh, lose that person. Uh, they don't want to lose the grip of that person. And that's often when the medium or channeler will start to get attacked, even though they haven't been attacked for decades by their spirit guides or their so-called dead relatives. Um, and the proof is in the pudding. If you've had a dead relative supposedly visiting you for decades, never attacked you once and now starts to attack you because you're trying to leave the spiritualist activities, that kind of a says it all. That, that In actual fact, they have been masquerading as your dead relatives or ascended masters, when in fact, uh, tragically, they were they have actually been demons in disguise. Very interesting how you know how that works. It's like they, they while they're being appeased, and you know the mm-hmm. the person thinks they're they're in control, they'll sort of mm-hmm. let them freely channel and do what they do because they have no threat and they're they're using them. But as soon as the person has other thoughts, um, uh, resistance. These demons will flare mm-hmm. up and 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 show yep. their authority in the person and claim that person mm-hmm. and and devastating things can happen. That's what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. You know that often the the person will then start to um, suffer from sleep paralysis, start Ooh. to get attacked by the demons, and so on. So yes, they, they do show their colors if a person tries to leave that type of activity. So this new age and spiritism they're related correct they're they're the same entity or this the same thing basically and they both came from theosophy right is that what you Mm -hmm. have learned Mm -hmm. and theosophy is from madame blavatsky helena blavatsky in the 1800s as we know who sort of uh merged uh, kabbalah ancient mysticism or eastern mysticism and and even satanism luciferianism now, are New Agers and Spiritists taught Luciferianism firsthand, or are they kind of uh, morphed into recognizing Lucifer? Well, it, it, I believe it really varies depending on on, on what um, group of people someone might join. I believe there are a lot of Spiritualists um, and New Agers out there have not been taught these links that you've mentioned uh, with theosophy, Luciferianism, Madame Blavatsky, uh, uh, and to them that they're they're perhaps not even really interested in the history of it or the theory of it. To them, they just want to contact spirits, uh, and that's all they're interested in. There'll be a, a majority of people like that, and I suspect a lot of people who watch ghost hunting programs on TV. You know, your average person sitting at home watching these programs again probably have never heard of, of the background of the history and aren't really that interested in that anyway. Um, some some people are taught uh, about the theosoph- theosophy and about the Lucis Trust, Madame Blavatsky, but not all of them. And I think that is sad because people, unless you know the history of something, what are you really getting into? You know, it, it's dangerous to just accept something without really looking at its source looking at the roots of it. Um, but but yeah, it just so happened that um, the spiritualist church my mother and I went to, the mediums there were aware of Madame Blavatsky. They were aware of Theosophy, um, the Lucis Trust, and so on. And like so many of them, they, they believed that, that, that Lucifer was God um, and that he was, he was an angel of light and that he certainly did not fall and become Satan. Uh, that was just nonsense that the church just made up. Um, and basically that Jesus was not the saviour. If anything, they felt Lucifer really was the shining light and that he um, is the the source. He is the power. He, he is the source of all types of spiritualities, all types of religions, actually. Psychic powers, healing powers, paranormal, whatever. Uh, he is actually the source of it all. Um, and so although we believe that, it's not as though we, we went there to worship Lucifer as such. Um, 
you know, it wasn't like that. We 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 acknowledged that he was at the top um, of all these spirits, if you like, but it, it, we kind of weren't too interested in him. We were just more interested in, in talking to spirits and spirit guides. That was far more the focus of it. Um, the the particular circle of friends that we had, anyway. But but yeah, I think it does really vary. And then of course you have the outright Luciferianism, the different branches of it, and as you say, even the the side of it which is a downright satanic. Um, so it's really quite a blend uh, and quite varied. And that's why the New Age, I guess, is hard to describe or nail down because it, it is a um, it, it is a belief system that, that that's got multiple different beliefs within it and practices and so on. One New Ager will believe one thing and practice something say like tarot cards and another new ager won't you know there there is such a variety within it all that's interesting and either way i i believe it goes back to its gnosticism in a, in a form because uh the the, the two things that uh, the the serpent in the garden taught and it goes back to the garden genesis 3 the two things is mm-hmm. one that you can be as gods yourself and the other is that you shall never die and these two mm-hmm. thoughts whether you believe in a lucifer deity or whether you believe in a concept of lucifer those two things mm-hmm. are really the aspect of new age right yeah yeah absolutely it's that idea of um we we need to all evolve spiritually we need to meditate and so on um to really raise our vibrations and to be able to to usher in the new age of of an age of peace and so on, we, we need to basically do these kind of a spiritual activities that will raise our vibrations and things that are not religious as such, but just to be more, you'll hear people say, I'm spiritual, I'm not religious. And that's why it's this looking forward to um, a new dawn in the future where everyone is for each other. You know, we all come together in peace and harmony, whatever the religion we are. Uh, we just all go on and basically worship the same God, really. Uh, that would be the, the idea. And it all stems from the serpent in the garden, which is basically a personification of Lucifer. So Lucifer, his influence and his indoctrination is threaded through uh, not only um, uh, New Age, but spiritism and occultism. So either way, it seems that there are ties in New Age and spiritism with occultism and witchcraft, and you mentioned that there's degrees of practices and variations according to uh, which uh, education uh, center or which group you're taught by, but either way, Mm -hmm. it sounds like there's absolute occult ties, links, and practices, and uh, um, variations, right? And even in the variations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and there is syncretism does go on. For example, when my mother and I were involved in spiritualism uh, within the UK, the majority of, of spiritualist movements or churches across the UK, for example, would have um, just stuck to spiritualist type practices. They would not have, for example, um, got gone into any kind of a shamanism or, or any kind of a white witchcraft, if you like. Um, they, they would actually have felt all that stuff is dangerous and we're just spiritualists and that's it. But nowadays, of course, um, you see much more of a blend. You will have people who will practice some shamanism, some Wicca, for example, some Kabbalah, some whatever. And it's just become a almost a do-it-yourself trying of, of the different um, practices. Um, and, of, and of course, you know, because as you say, it's it's that just wanting to be your own God, wanting to have your own spirituality and not being hemmed in by the religions of our, of our forefathers. Now, you mentioned at the beginning that uh, you did recognize Halloween, and as our Halloween season, so to speak, is coming up, and, you know, some of us have researched it, knows it goes back to uh, the San, uh, the Soen, um festivals of the Druids and things like that. New Age is directly related to Halloween in, in a lot of ways, right? And and its uh, um, its practices, you know. Well, tell us how how it links, and you know some background about Halloween. Why don't you uh, tell us mm-hmm. what you you know what you found? 
Yeah, well, certainly when I was into the New Age and, and spiritualism, we all felt that around the time of, of Halloween or Samhain, that the, the thin the, the the veil was thinner between the earth and the spiritual realms, that there were more portals opened and that it was a much easier time of year um to contact spirits and you know, I believe that the the New Agers and, and so on still still believe that today. And you know people would have said, for example, it, it usually that type that time of year, October, November, it usually peaks a few days before Halloween and then it builds up. There's a climax around Halloween and then it descends again back to normal levels. Uh, of course, for Wiccans, um, All All Hallows' Eve is the time of the new year and they would they would feel that too. And some people would say, why does this happen at, at this time of year in the autumn? And we would feel well, it's to do with, you know, the, the dying of, of, of leaves and flowers and so on nature things are beginning to die so the spirits of nature are much more active with that whole um cycle of death and, and renewal uh, but you know it's interesting because that doesn't explain why that happens in countries where autumn does not fall uh, in october oh. so obviously there's more uh, it, you can't just explain it by that um and and of course yeah that there's the the celtic pagan links there in the, in the ancient druids um, of Europe. The autumn equinox was always very, um, very important to them on their on their spiritual calendar. We still, today, we do still have, in fact, a bit of a revival, if you like, in pagan, druid, Celtic, uh, Samhain festivals. Um, for example, in Edinburgh and Scotland, every year they have a very famous Samhain festival uh, there's one down in Glastonbury too in England, and yeah, you know, it's very much there will be druid and, and pagan processions. They will have an occult market where they'll sell jewellery, books on magic, and so on. Um, and I did go there a few years ago with some Christians, um, and and saw what went on. They, they will have a medium there, mediums there having, uh, channeling spirits, or there will be a ghost hunt tour for so on. It, it, very much a, a a night to try anything occult like but but yeah historically we, we've been told of course that it's an honor of the, of the lord of the dead um offerings of crops were made for example some say animal sacrifices and human sacrifices too they believed that at this time the souls of the dead were also thought to revisit their homes and really all sorts of divination and sorcery would take place um and of course, there'd be significance of the pumpkins carved into the the, the jack of lanterns. Um, they believed that these masks would chase spirits, and basically, you know, villagers were even cursed if they didn't provide food um, to the leaders of, of those areas. So today, you know, in the most part, people, if if they are offering sacrifices, it will mostly be um, crops. They will say, but of course we do know there are still some animal sacrifices that do take place. Um, but rather than going into, you know, I think most of us may have heard of a lot of the, the kind of a history and how the Catholic Church tried to reinvent Halloween and so on. But I think um, there's an interesting link between between Halloween and the Day of the Dead festivals that occur around the same time. And this, I think, is really significant and really quite telling because you have Day of the Dead festivals taking place in many cultures, cross-culturally down through time. You know, almost on every continent, there has been or still is a Day of the Dead at the same time as Halloween. There may be a Day of the Skulls or the Ghost Festival, different variants of it. But it's just too much of a coincidence that at this time of year, um, the Day of the Dead, for example, they pay homage or ritualise the dead ancestors. They try to uh, contact the dead. You've got the Mexican Day of the Dead, of course, which is quite a um, famous one, um, going back to the ancient festival of, of, of by the Aztecs. 
China, Indonesia have a similar day. Really, the list goes on. So I think that really suggests there is a parallel here between the Day of the Dead and Halloween. There is something significant about this time of year that, yes, the veil is thinner. And why is that? Because all these cultures down through the ages at this particular time of year all seem to have their own um, time of Day of the Dead, of, of contacting spirits, of doing occult practices. I find that interesting when we're, we're talking about um, a time of year when way back there was no communication, you know, we didn't have <laughs> TV or, or, or whatever. So how could some cultures on one part of the world be doing a very similar practice to cultures in another part of the world and not even know each other were doing it. I believe that is because it is spirit induced and it was spirits themselves that did indeed um start to do this at this time of year and that yes a lot of it involves sacrifices or um murder, sexual orgies and so on. So that if you like the whole world collectively at this time of year is doing a lot of more occult things than other times of the year. Satanic practices um, included. So you've got all these satanic things happening, all of these occult things taking place. Of course, the veil is going to be thinner when people are doing this at this time of year. Um, so I think that's really quite significant. And I don't think it's um, just a mere coincidence. That's very interesting. So, like the, the the those of us that have dabbled in the occult or have experienced things realize that a lot of it is building up of energy, and as that energy mm -hmm. is perceived to exist and built up, it actually creates a sort of channel, a portal for demonic spirits. Mm -hmm. So, a actually, it makes sense that uh, all the, all the uh, cultures of the world that have been influenced by demonic entities had a concerted designated time or day or season that they would mm -hmm. build up the energies, that the energies would be much more higher, and of course the potential of channeling much more significant, uh, significant and and uh, put, uh, you know built up to to have a potential high energy time it seems that they had used this time as the the practical season to say this is the this is the highest energy raised as everybody is consciously doing the same thing and it's it's just raising a higher awareness leaving a whole mm -hmm. large portal or channel uh for for the people throughout the ages that are, are are summoning demons for not only them to have these celebrations and practices of the same, but have these mm -hmm. entities kind of look forward to a day of this is it. This is our chance to uh, be channeled, portaled mm -hmm. you know, into this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, into this realm. I don't know if that makes sense, mm -hmm. but it seems what it yeah, is. Yeah, I, th I think so. And I think that obviously for, for different groups, there are other um, special times throughout the year as well, but it just so happens that Halloween uh, is one of those key dates, and, and so for many groups it will be quite a highlight for them for, for, for the entire year. Um, yeah, and so folks might say, well, why? Why, you know, in the first place, why would demons choose uh, this time of year? Why October, November? What, what, what What's that all about anyway? Um, and of course, it, oftentimes demons will do something um, as a, a direct perversion of something um, to do with God, something to do with Jesus. And so there are some who say, well, of course this is speculative, but it's interesting. Well, you know, perhaps it relates to, for example, uh, at this time of year we have the Jewish Day of Atonement, Yom oh, Kippur. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and although it's not to honour the dead, obviously, but you know, in a sense, it's for repentance for the sins of the people. Maybe the, the demons have um, done that at that time of year, just because they obviously they wouldn't be keen on people repenting. Um, some say that, well, you know, think about about sacrifices that are often carried out, different types of occult, and again, why at this time of the year would be would there be more of that? 
perhaps it, it goes back to, we can relate back to Baal worship, we can relate it right back to perhaps even um, Adam and Eve in, in the Garden of Eden. You know, they ate the fruit. So does it suggest because they ate a fruit um, that this was autumn time? You know, did Adam and Eve actually sin during the autumn? Who knows? It's very speculative, but it's interesting um, just where it may well have came in that because that time of year something significant happened, maybe the demons, um, as it were, like to mark that and, and, and like to create havoc. Um, but there certainly has to be a reason why there has to be um, this repetition of, of sacrifices in ancient cultures, of course, as well, that were very sadistic and why indeed they would do this. Um, and I think obviously it is, a, again, it is because demons love to create suffering. Satan requires blood sacrifices and, and also because it is a mock of the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins and his blood um, cleansing us and us becoming born again through him. So, you know, that is probably why a lot of the times the demons do require these um, satanic sacrifices anyway. So whatever way you look at it, and I think as well because, for example, some groups of Satanists will literally mock the blood of Jesus and mock the crucifixion, especially at Halloween. Out of all their celebrations throughout the year, Halloween is the time when they most um, like to desecrate the cross uh, and so on. So I think we can see how the, all the kind of spiritual things do link in there. Uh, that's very good, Laura. Uh, that's a that's a deep connection that I think a lot of people have not possibly thought of. And, you know, the fact that the, the autumn season was around the season of the Feast of Trump, Trumpets and the Feast of Atonement and, and the Jewish Feast of the New Year for their New Year, mm -hmm. it would make sense that Satan is hiding his, you know, ramping up his efforts in that time to counterfeit mm -hmm. it and to distract from those significant points and those significant marks of, of Yahweh God and Jesus Christ to make a mark and a dedication himself and mark it for his own purposes and counterfeit it mm -hmm. and uh, make that his high holy day as well. That makes mm -hmm. much sense. Mm -hmm. I think so. And, you know, I've, I've been sharing about, about you know, my insights on Halloween since about 2010. And it was only last year that, that I saw this, you know, in a slightly deeper way. And now I'm like, wow, why didn't I see that before? But yeah, so I think, therefore, when you hear famous mediums, um, for example, in the UK, Derek Akora um, w was quite a famous medium a while back, and he would say, yeah, you know, around the time of Halloween, it's a great time to contact spirits. The veil's a lot thinner. Um, and I just think, no wonder, because all the, the kind of a really demonic stuff that can go on, we know about people who ha have, have shared about being being abused, being raped um, by certain satanic groups at this time of year. We know about satanic ritual abuse. All of this stuff goes on through October, yes, but the highlight is around about the day of Halloween itself. So as you say, no wonder that these are these energy surges that, that people describe feeling just in the atmosphere this time of year. So uh, it does it seem that the occultists since or, or let's say the luciferians or well let's say generally the occultists are they successful or are the demons successful in coming here as a portal do you think that they actually do advance at this time more so than other times or is it a potential for them to do more i mean do you think it has an effect i i think so um just because of what i described um, if all around the world there are various types of Day of the Dead festivals and so on, um, all around the world at this time of year where they are trying to contact spirits and so on, that as well as the, the darker 
occult groups, the, the, the really dark um, satanic groups that will literally be sacrificing people and animals. If all of that stuff is happening at this time of year, then yes, I think the, the demons, um, they're obviously going to love it. So if they love it, it's giving them um, power, if you like. It, it's it's allowing them to really do what they want to do. So a medium, for example, might channel, yeah, all through the year. But if she's doing it more at this time of year, I think it will be easier for her because, yes, the, the demons have been energised, if you like. Uh, they have been given this power, if you like, simply because of their tension uh, and the focus on occult at this time of year. So it probably doesn't help that the secular world, at least, participates in Halloween. Uh, that, uh, I mean, how do, how do Wiccan, how do New Agers feel about others that don't really know what they're doing participate in it? Are they are are they offended or are they ecstatic that the world is unwittingly helping the energy? Um, well, I guess personal people's um, feelings will, will vary, of course, but on the most part, certainly when I was into New Age and Occult, for the most part, we um, we loved Halloween. Um, we felt it was a great time of year to talk to your neighbours about contacting spirits, ask them if they want their tarot cards read, you know, invite them to a seance, um, go a ghost hunting tour, because it's just that time of year when everything paranormal is on people's minds. Even those who think it's nonsense or think it's just a bit of fun, it was a great time of year to actually invite people along to something um, that other times of the year you might not invite them to. And much more people, including children, will, will be much more likely to try divination, to try Ouija boards or so on at this time of year. There's just much more opportunity uh, for it. And of course, demons are opportunists. Um, they'll be quite happy if anybody does do that. And, and you know, for example, Anton Levy, he, he said he was glad Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the year. Right. Obviously, he said he said that slightly tongue-in-cheek, but but yeah, I think on the most part, um, different groups will be quite pleased that uh, the secular world does celebrate Halloween. Now, how do New Agers feel about like the, the dark aspects of coming in, like the ghosts and ghouls and devils? Uh, you know, obviously, New Agers don't say they believe in the ghouls and devils and the vampire and all that. But how do they feel? I mean... Do they kind of join in the festivities and the fun while they know the underlining true essence of this time of year? Again, I suppose it will depend on the individual. Some might be offended by that, but some might say, oh, you know, it's just a bit of fun. It's just tradition. Certainly when I was a spiritualist, I still went to Halloween parties. Uh, I loved getting dressed up and all of that. And, and I knew that... Um, the average person doesn't understand spiritually really what, you know, the history of these things. But it didn't really bother me, as I say, because I just felt it was a great time of year to invite people to seances and so on. So I just saw the opportunity of it then. Oh, so you uh, the New Agers would take opportunity in this rather than be offended in, in the most part. So the ghosts yeah, and it, all that was just kind mm -hmm. of cosmetic to, it's to, to help... Uh, in in the energy of of what the moods of people were, and it was an opportunity for them to recruit. Yeah, you know, as I say, this time of year we, we in Edinburgh there is the Samhain festival. Um, there is similar down in Glastonbury and other places around the UK and around the world. You know, you'll have um, special events at Salem, Massachusetts, and so on. Hot um, occult hot spots around the world, I'm sure, will have. Halloween festivals, occult festivals, because, yeah, they'll know that it will be published in the local paper, the local radio channels will cover it, so you'll get more people from society going along there for some fun, uh, as they think, go, taking the children along for something different to do, um, and end up um, really being surrounded in an atmosphere where, where there is paganism, there is druidism, there is... Uh, necromancy and contacting the dead so yeah I think most groups will find it a great time of year to as you say 
recruit, um, which sounds a, a kind of cold-blooded way of putting it in a sense. But but yeah, you know, we did feel it was a good time of year to recruit. So did did the 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 New Age and Spiritists recognize the Druid rituals and the practices along with it? I mean, obviously, you may not have been involved in. Uh, human sacrifices and as you said the degrees varied according to practice but did they recognize the druid rituals in Halloween and uh, they were sort of honored that these were allowed to be carried on even with the the symbolic aspects of Halloween with the secular people that didn't know Mm -hmm. well certainly that was the case with myself and my new age friends and, and spiritualist friends yes it was for us that's interesting. So as as um, you say that this was an opportunity for occultists and this was this and an opportunity for New Age drafting and participating, maybe unwittingly getting them involved in the, in the ritual, uh, not knowing mm-hmm. it. And it was, it was a highlight for everybody. And, you know, the, the, the occultists certainly don't mind the energy being raised by even those that don't know what they're doing. Do you think it's a mm-hmm. wise practice for Christians to be participant in Halloween? And I mean, I mean, actively uh, participant, mm-hmm. recognizing it as a fun time for children. Because I know churches that have dress up and and ghosts and skeletons on their on their decor, and I have gone by them, uh, seeing people on the outside, you know, on the outside dressed up, as, you know, in in costume, and I stop and say, do you? really know what you're doing they're like oh come off it it's just fun do you think it can be Mm -hmm. just fun well personally i don't um because of everything i've said so far um even uh, taking a a very uh, basic level um even just the the dressing up as vampires or, or witches or you know some of the horrible costumes if you think about just think about Jesus and the disciples think about people throughout the Bible do you really think they would have dressed up like that um, when we are called to you know a life of purity a life of holiness um, and the Bible says think about good things you know um, meditate on good things Ephesians 5 11 says do not imitate the deeds of darkness but rather expose them why imitate uh, you know, being dressed up as one of these characters, um, especially when so much of it is so gruesome. And yeah, people will say, well, th- there was no harm done, but you don't really know that. You can't actually see into your own own soul and see what's happening in your own soul when you're involved in, in, in that type of thing, even just at a, the level of, of a party. You don't know the darkness of your own soul. Only God can see, you know, what that has done to you. And there will be people who will say, I know what it's done to me because I got deliverance. When I became a Christian, I, I got deliverance from having been involved in Halloween. You know, um, so it shows you there's been curses involved in it, even if you don't think you're getting involved in something occultic. It's, it's almost as if the very spirit of Halloween itself, um, the time of year, there are going to be more demons about. There are going to be more occult demons about. They're opportunists opportunists they're going to be hanging about at Halloween and Halloween festivals and so on so why even be in that atmosphere um to be to be tainted by it different you know if you're a Christian who's going out there and you're actually praying for people um you're witnessing to people at some occult festival Halloween that's different but if you're actually taking part it, it, it's like you are condoning it in a sense and condoning the the, the the, the demonic that is behind it. Well, some Christians say, you know, uh, like you said, how how if you have if you're s- filled by the Spirit, how would you want to participate? But some Christians say, well, I can't be harmed by it because I'm a believer and the Holy Spirit dwells in me. And I would say, <sighs> well, if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you would recognize at least have discernment to see that this is entertaining the the darkness and is participating, even though it isn't. Uh, recognized by you as such, they um, they do you do let down your guard, and you are opening yourself up for the things that the spirits know that this is involving. So once you participate, you're letting yourself 
open, you're just like dabbling in, in occultism. You wouldn't do that as a, as a believer. So why would you participate in the occult practices? So if you think that you can mm -hmm. summon a Ouija board and say, oh, this is fun, well, if you're a believer and you do that, it's different than if you're an unbeliever if you do that, because if you're a believer and you do that, you know better, and you're actually opening yourself up. Even though you're indwelled in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is pushed aside for your inv invitation of the spirits, and mm -hmm. it can open yourself up to demonic uh, demonization or or uh, or or some kind of uh, um, power that uh, you know entrances you or whatever because you're inviting it yourself you know just like dabbling mm -hmm. in horoscope or anything else and it, and especially when for example we've already des described what does happen at this time of year um around the world why would you want to impersonate um or celebrate goblins and devils and blood and gore you know that it's all very dark it's all it might seem fun but it's all very dark what is there to celebrate or praise about that, about Halloween, about death, and um, some of the costumes you see are, are pretty horrific. You know, Jesus has life. He came to bring peace and life, life and abundance. He, he doesn't focus on death and all of these horrible things, even though it is just one night of the year. You know, the Bible does ask us to be careful with our thought life and how we and how we act. And yes, I believe people are opened up to demons on this night. And although they might not sense it or see anything happen to them, down the line, a few years later or something, curses could, could happen, things could happen in their life that actually began on this night because they did take part in some Halloween festivities. Interesting. So, um, you know, what comes to mind, well, first of all, what do we do? Hide, lock our doors and, and wish it all goes away. I, you know, what comes to mind is the Monty Python uh, uh, little phrase there, run away, run away. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you suggest? Um, well, there are, I guess there's different things. There, there will be people, I'm sure, who uh, stay home or uh, go to church and have a prayer meeting. Um, for their neighbourhood, for the protection of children and adults, um, just because of there is a higher risk of vandalism this time of year, I suppose, and theft and so on. Uh, but also protect protection for them, uh, spiritual protection. Um, so there will be people who do that. But you know, you could also my, myself years ago, I did go to the the Halloween festival up in Edinburgh that they have every year. And there was many New Ager type of people there. There were witches, there were druids, pagans, all sorts of folks. And myself and some Christian friends went. They had been doing it every year. And each year they went, they would pray for the people at the procession. You know, it would be like a marketplace. It was a festive night of festival. They would pray for people. They would even lead people to Jesus. People would be healed and so on. So they were being salt and light. They were taking Christ's light into the darkness um, and I believe that around the world there are other Christian groups who do the same um, at these types of festivals at this time of year. So, you know, and it may be that these folks won't ever meet a Christian. Um, so why not go and take the gospel to them? They might never step in a church. So why not go out um, and not be afraid of what's going on, but just... Um, I mean, remember the people in the Bible who would go to areas where there was lots of occult activity uh, and they went and they took the gospel to them. So I would say use it as an opportunity to reach others, definitely in, in prayer, cover your neighbourhood in prayer, but do use it as an opportunity um, uh, to reach people on this particular night. That's very interesting because, you know, we tend to just let's close the door, turn off the lights and let them pass by. Hopefully they don't come to my door because I'm not participating, not even giving them candy. And I don't want them to know I'm I'm even home. Uh, but I got to watch out in case they, they, they trick my house. You know, they bomb my house with eggs or something. But mm -hmm. you're saying almost be proactive and and go just like uh, Paul went onto the um, uh, the hill, the Mars Hill there, and witnessed to the exactly. pagans doing practices. Yeah. Why exactly. don't, yeah, why don't we do our own 
trick or treating, so to speak, as tongue in cheek, you know. Uh, but while as they're out there trick or treating, why don't we do our gospel evangelism and meet them as they're walking by? Give them tracks, tell them about the gospel exactly. instead of hiding. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. Uh, exactly, and, and because as a night when people are thinking about the supernatural, paranormal, life after death, use that, you know. Share with people testimonies you may know of other people, ex-witches, ex-mediums, ex-New Agers, ex-Satanists, who did get attacked by their so-called dead relatives, their so-called spirit guides, and became born again and found salvation and healing in Jesus. So, you know, use um, those types of testimonies when you're talking to people, um, ex-ghost hunters, ex-paranormal investigators who have now come to Jesus. Share those kind of a stories at this time of year because the public are more open to hearing these stories at this time of year. Their minds are more um, looking for things of a supernatural nature. That's interesting. You know, what a concept to evangelize, actually do what we're supposed to do and take the opportunity mm-hmm. to do it. And, mm-hmm. you know, we tend to think that they have to come into our churches. Well, that's the wrong place to evangelize. The church is for the believer. It says in the scripture, the, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the church is the ecclesia, those that are gathered as called out ones, the saints that come together to edify and encourage one another. And maybe a stray unbeliever would come in, but we have a different concept here. We open up the doors and, and tend to appease the unbelievers and tell them to come to this place called church, which isn't really what church mm-hmm. is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And then yep. in order to assimilate them, we become more like them than they are of us. But how about going out into the world where they are? And like you said, when the mm-hmm. times are heightened, that they are spiritually, even if it's satanic, uh, alerted or heightened to go out and preach to them the gospel during that time. This would be the mm-hmm. grand opportunity, even more so, I think, than Christmas or something. Totally, yeah. You know, you, you, there's all the Halloween paraphernalia in the shops, all these uh, costumes and so on. It's very easy to strike up a conversation with something, uh, with someone about witchcraft um, or, or Satanism and, and to say to them, yeah, you know, I've actually I've, I've read a book by an ex-Satanist who, you know, he was about to be the sacrifice for his coven on Halloween, but... He actually got a vision of Jesus and he came to Jesus, he left the coven, etc., etc. You know, there, there, are, there are books out there. Um, a, a woman I know, Ali Tower, she is an ex-Wiccan witch. She just brought a book out with her testimony. Again, an ideal time of year to, to bring out such a book or, or to share such a, a YouTube type of testimony with people. Wow, you know, I'm glad you brought this out because uh, you know this is airing before this Halloween time, and um, maybe it'll get some Christians thinking and to prepare for something like this. I mean, rather than lock the doors and hide, or even have your mm-hmm. so-called Christianized Halloween parties called Harvest Fests, and you know, and, and just basically counterfeiting their counterfeit. <laughs> you know, why not? Just yeah, I mean, do... what you know, what good does that do when, when, as you say, Jim, we can be proactive and actually just get out there and uh, and share the gospel and, and and pray for New Agers, pray for witches, Wiccans. You know, th- there is a Facebook page titles "I Hate Halloween" uh, began several years ago um, by a group of us. And each of us are from a, a, a either New Age or an occult background. And it's quite a good page because often there's suggestions and things like that on there. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of Christians go on there and, and they pray as well for their neighborhoods. So, yeah, let's, you know, try to be proactive. Well, I, I was thinking of, of doing a show that night um, and, and having people call in if I could set it up and, and pray. But you know what? I, I'm thinking now... Maybe I won't do that, and maybe I'll get a group here locally and go on the streets and 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 face the people that are trick or trick or treating and offer them the gospel. That sounds like a better yeah. idea almost now. There, obviously, there, there's lots of things people can do. You know, if 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 they want to to think of different things, and you know, I was very encouraged a couple of years back to hear of um, a group of people, Christians in Norway. And they have got this 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 festival, this this party. It's called Halloween, and Halloween is actually Norwegian for hello friend. So they have this Halloween party, 
and um, it, it's in the local com- communities around Norway where people go like a gala day, like a children's um, party, family go there and there's nothing occultic going on. It's not even a harvest type festival or anything like that. It's simply just um, somewhere to go at this time of year. And, and I believe there will be people who will go there uh, rather than go to any Halloween um, party itself. So children are still going there. They're still having some fun. And I thought, you know, that's quite a pioneering thing. And as far as I know, I don't think there's many things like that going on around the world, but I thought that was really quite encouraging. I know when people do that here, they tend to bring in elements of some Halloween aspects, unwittingly mm-hmm. mixing the two. Yep. And and then they some of them allow mild dressing up, and they say, no scary uniforms, but you can use um, biblical uniforms and dress up and, and, and have mm-hmm. Halloween masks and such. So it, as far as I know, this as far as I know, uh, Halloween isn't isn't like that. There's nothing uh, like that taking place. Yeah, yep. that's, but that's but good. yeah, I think as as you say, you know, it's just why why not be proactive and be be salt and light in in our communities. Yeah. There's a, a UK a Christian radio station in the UK called UCB, and they every Halloween they give out free. Um, people can request a free, it's a little bag that, that you give to children and it has um, a gospel tract in it or, or whatever. It's got things in it that basically if they do come to your door trick-or-treating, you can hand out those those little bags. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, okay, maybe some people might throw it in the trash, but there's always going to be someone who will read it or, you know, look into it. So I think it is worth having certain tracks about about Halloween that, that are relevant to, to, to that to, to share. Like, as I said, X medium testimony, for example, might be the kind of track that would be more likely uh, people would read it at this time of year. Certainly something to think about and to lean towards. Uh, Laura, do you have anything else that you might want to sum up or are you good at this point? Uh, basically, if any if anyone's interested in what what I've shared, uh, you know they could look at my blog. My blog does have a few different articles about Halloween or relevant testimonies, and also videos on my YouTube channel where I, where I have collected. I love to collect testimonies of people, um, ex New Agers, ex occultists, and quite a few of them. They will actually mention the, the rele- relevance of of Halloween. So folks can check it out if, if they think it might be useful. Ourspiritualquest.com um, and across the menu it says Day of Evil rather than Halloween itself. I didn't want to uh, use the word Halloween, so I've got Day of Evil there. Mm-hmm. And as I say, a bit of the history of Day of the Dead, Halloween, etc. Uh, they can find that on my blog if they want. Well, Laura, this has been very informative for people. I, I really thank you for... Uh coming to us from Scotland and joining us and, and speaking to the listeners. Well, thanks so much for having me on, Jim. It's, it's been a pleasure to be on your show again. Thanks for asking. All right, and we'll stay in touch. Absolutely. And there you have it, Laura Maxwell, her website, ourspiritualquest.com. And my website is jimdukeperspective.com. That's where you can find all my information. And uh, we're on YouTube as well. Share this information with others so the word gets out, so the information gets out, because it's the only way it's going to get out as they're trying to, uh, well, they're trying to stifle this kind of information. You don't want to be on their side, right? You want to be on the glory of God, spreading the gospel and spreading the truth to the public. We'll see you next time. We got Doc Marquis coming back with us next week on a Tuesday edition. Stay tuned for that. And that will be at 8 p.m. Tuesday, October 24th. We'll see you next time, and God bless. 